It is a crisis for artists right now. Um, it is certainly, I think, one of the most difficult times that artists have had to face in, certainly in my living memory. Um, for many artists, if not the majority of artists, it is very difficult to have an income at this time. And while people are trying many different um, innovative ways of sharing their work and their artistry, um, it is incredibly challenging. And I think that the arts have always been a vulnerable sector in a sense. Many artists do not have permanent employment. They work as freelancers or they work uh, for themselves. Um, they need to be kind of entrepreneurial. And I think in this climate, it has become increasingly difficult to do that work, particularly if you have not had experience of working in other media or if you're not willing to work in other media. So for those artists whose primary uh, focus is theater, which is of course most of our Assetage members, um, I think it is an incredibly challenging time. And then it is made even more challenging by the fact that the situation has also hit schools and the education system so hard. And that is of course a primary and very important audience for theater for young audiences, uh, companies and artists. And so it's become increasingly difficult to access children either in theater spaces, festival spaces, or in schools and creches and the other kind of community-based spaces that we might have been able to access them in the past. So these difficulties have really compounded uh, and people have had to get really creative to deal with the challenges. And I don't think we've found any answers yet. And I think that one of the things that is really worrying at the moment is that this pandemic does not have an immediate uh, end point. And it's likely to be with us in some shape or form for a long time. And it's requiring us to really adapt and, and strategize on a number of different levels in order to ensure the survival of artists and, and the arts. I think there, there are many things that companies can do, um, but I, I would hesitate to say that there is anything that companies should do <laughs> because I don't think that there is a one size fits all answer to what a company needs to do in this moment of crisis. I think that companies really have to look to their mission, to their strengths, to the content that they've already produced that they're able to utilize and maybe find new mechanisms for sharing to their creativity and how they can perhaps try and engage with audiences differently in this time. And so I think there are a lot of different options. And one of the things which I've found incredibly positive about this time, despite all the challenges, is that theater companies and artists have been so generous with sharing their experiences, their knowledge, their struggles um, with others. And I think that part of what Assetage has been able to do is be a holding space for some of those conversations. And of course, we're not the only ones. There have been many other regional conversations and conversations which have been initiated by different organizations. But I think that these conversations are so important because they help us see our own perspective in a new, in a, help us see our own situation in a new perspective. Um, and they also give us ideas for how we might deal with the challenges. I think that one of the things that comes through very clearly is that now is a time for collaboration. Now is a time for working together, whether it's just on the ideas level, sharing ideas, sharing challenges, or whether it's actually in the sense of working together on projects. And I've seen a, a number of really exciting uh, in international, um, within continents, within countries, collaborations that have started in, in the light of the pandemic, in response to the pandemic, uh, where people have been able to say, I can bring this to the partnership. 
uh, what can you bring? And people bring their different strengths, they bring their resources, which might take different forms. And then together that project is able to have some kind of a life. And I think that this is incredibly valuable to, to work with. So I feel very blessed to be part of a network like Asitej, where there is this generosity and this sharing and where this kind of collaboration is possible. I think that there have been many discoveries during this time of how we can use technology to um, speak to one another, to work together over great distances, to even create together. Um, and I think that it's going to certainly hasten the use of technology into the future, uh, whether that is in the process of making theater or in its delivery. I think that people are realizing that there's great value in also having the, the virtual element to the, to the engagement. And that one of the pluses of virtual engagement is the fact that your reach can be so much broader. Um, so I think that there will be some things that are retained from this time. And I think that there's been a lot of experimentation around form uh, around the use of technology in performance, the use of interactive techniques with audiences using technology, which may well find their ways into live theater. At the moment, we're doing everything virtually and trying to give a feel of live. And maybe when we go back to live, we'll find that it reverses, that we are in a live space, but we still have the feel of the virtual. Um, so I think that's quite an interesting development. I think and I hope that there will be a, a real sense of reclaiming that live space, a real kind of energy and, and relief and joy in being able to share a physical space with others um, and particularly with our, our audience, with our children and, and with young people. Um, I think that there is nothing that can replace that kind of energy and an exchange that happens in real time and space. And what I hope is that, that people will flock back to it because they will have felt the need. I certainly feel it as a need. Uh, I recently had the opportunity to experience a virtual uh, festival, which is a festival that I've attended almost every year since I was at high school, um, the National Arts Festival in South Africa. And I had to attend it online. And my overwhelming feeling was a feeling of loss. Um, as much as there was some interesting content, as much as there were some things that I engaged with, um, largely it just was not the same for me. It was not the same experience. And um, I just felt such a strong need to be in the phys physical festival space and to be able to chat to people you know, in a queue or um, have a cup of coffee and talk about a production um, in a relaxed way that was just not possible. However inventive we are with the virtual, it doesn't work the same. So um, I, I hope that that will be the case. Uh, I also think that, that artists are going to start to really um, explore that intimacy. And the fact when, when we are able to be physical again, I think that possibly the um, the contact and the, the way that we can make contact will become very, very important. Um, and I imagine that artists will really want to exploit the capacity of the live space to do that. Um, so I'm imagining that there's going to be a burst of creativity at the end of this pandemic, um, as we see artists coming back. What worries me though, is the economic conditions within which that is going to to be happening. And I think that that will remain very, very challenging even after the health issues have been dealt with. I think that's very important. And I think that the, the theatres and organisations that are able to do that at this time are really, um, you know, being both strategic but also um, I think being of service because, you know, what we need to remember is that um, our children and our audiences, they need us now. <laughs> um, and we need to be finding ways to serve them and to reach them and to keep them engaged, to
to keep their parents engaged, to keep the teachers engaged, to keep those um, around them who, who help them to encounter the arts engaged. And the more we can do that, uh, the stronger we will be ultimately. So I think it's, you know, it's excellent what you're, what you're saying and um, I fully support it. And I think that if companies are in a position to do that, then it really is an area that they should be focusing on right now. It's a, it's a very important question and it's something that we face in South Africa very much as, as well because we have one of the most unequal societies in the world and we have a lot of poverty. So there are many children who are not able to access um, the performing arts and certainly not online. So even before the virus, it would have been difficult for them to access the arts. But now um, with this move to being online, of course, data and Wi-Fi and all of those things and the device itself is often beyond their reach. So one of the projects that we have actually been working on um, sprang out of this conversation. We were collecting a whole lot of online materials for children to access. And then we started to think about the children who would not be able to access these materials. And so together with some other organizations in South Africa, coming from different sectors, we have created a, a physical, uh, we call it a treasure box activity pack. And it's a physical pack that can go out to children, um, which is based on a production, which hopefully they'll get to see one day. So they not, will now know all about the characters in that production. Um, and they meet the characters, but the characters are not telling the story of the production. They are engaging them in little activities, in little creative challenges, in things that they can do at home in their own space uh, with their family um, and as they move, go back to school potentially with friends with social distancing. And it's also being used to spread some ideas about how to keep safe during the time of COVID. So there is a kind of COVID awareness around it. Um, and we've tried to make these activity packs as cost effective as possible so that um, we can get a lot of them out. And we've now managed to get around 100,000 um, packs out. And we're working on the next lot of, of packs. Um, we've also had them translated into six different languages. Um, so they're going to be going out in all parts of the country at the moment. It's been mostly in the Western Cape, but it will be in many other provinces um, and we've been working with a number of partners to help with the distribution of these packs. So we have food parcels that go to families and communities who are very poor. And so we've been making sure that the activity packs go out with the food parcels. And that's been one of the ways we've distributed. And it's not the same as live theater, obviously, but it is allowing children to be creative, to engage imaginatively, to step into the world of these characters um, to learn a little bit about them, but also to, to have their own creativity. Um, so that's one example. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think that there are many other examples as well um, of, of people who have really tried to find ways to reach children. One of the other things that has been very important um, within the African context is radio. And I think that radio is a wonderful um, media in the sense that for me, it's almost closest to theater. Um, you have to use your imagination with radio, you know, unlike with television where, where kind of everything is shown you. Um, with radio, you have to listen to the sounds and imagine what's happening. You have to fill in all the gaps. And I think that there's an enormous um, possibility there for artists to create interesting radio um, engagements with children and young people, which will hopefully um, engage them emotionally and intellectually, but also then when we are able to come back into theatre spaces, we'll have already established that connection between the, the artists and the audience. Um, and so it will mean that the audience will be really keen to see these artists in action when they have the opportunity to do so. Thank you. 
And maybe just to add to that, um, also there's been a lot of experimentation, not so much in South Africa, but in other parts of the world with um, either the writing of small plays for children to do at home with their families or for um, kind of audio led experiences, creative experiences, which, you know, I don't think they've been done on radio, but I don't see why they couldn't be done on radio actually. Um, but they could certainly be done uh, through any sort of audio mechanism, you know, as a podcast or um, SoundCloud or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and basically what happens in that sense is that you, it's, it's almost like you've got your art, the artist in your ears um, and they're giving you prompts to do things in your own space. Um, you know, so for example, to, to create a cave um, somewhere, you know, what could you use? Look around, can you, can you see something you could use to create your cave? Is there a box? Is there a blanket? Is there, a, you know, um, and then children kind of engage with it and go on a little adventure with the artist kind of leading the experience. Um, and of course that can have characters and that can have all kinds of, kinds, kinds of things. So um, there've been some really interesting experiments about how to engage with children imaginatively in this kind of playful, interactive way when you aren't able to deliver theater specifically to them.